I will never, ever forget the feeling that we had on that bus or that I had when we pulled into Anniston. The streets were deserted, like a movie in, 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 at high noon. Everybody was off the street. You get that eerie feeling, and everyone on that bus was very quiet. I think we were all thinking the same thing. What are we in for? When the bus turned down that street, Gurney Street, and then into the area where the Greyhound bus station was, and we saw that crowd, we knew then we were going to be in for a rough time. That's awesome. I had no idea how rough it was. inside the bus terminal and since they could not get onto the bus to get us they started breaking out the windows and thank goodness the glass on the bus windows was the type that did not shatter otherwise we would all have been uh, covered with glass shards and the windows just crept then they started to rock the bus now, a large Greyhound bus was being rocked by men outside. I remember sitting with Ed Blankenheim, the late Ed Blankenheim. And Ed said to me, Hank, we need to get out and go and see if the bus station is segregated. And I looked at him in amazement. I said, Ed, we don't need to do that. There was no way I was going to get off of that bus. And after a while, though it seems like hours, after calls to Robert Kennedy and the president's office, Greyhound got a driver who would agree to take the drive the bus home to Birmingham. We did not know at the time that the bus tires had been cut. So the driver got on and tried to drive away. There were people sitting down in front of the bus on the outside and cars. The bus could not travel any faster than maybe 15 miles per hour. There were three or four cars in front of the bus, a couple of pickups, and a line of cars behind the bus. I don't know why they were doing that, but I soon found out because they knew that the tires had been cut and it was just going to be a matter of time before the bus would have to come to a stop. And it did, a few miles uh, down Route 202 uh, in front of a little country store, where by coincidence, and I guess it was a coincidence, a crowd of people had gathered. They'd come from church. They had their children with them. And they were there to see that the Freedom Riders get killed. I will never forget my comparing that to a story I had read about Jews in a little village in Poland in 1943. Where the Germans came in, rounded up all of the Jews in that town, took them to the synagogue, which was made of wood, put them all there, nailed the doors shut, poured gasoline all over the building, set it afire, and a little boy coming along saw it and he ran to the local Catholic church where the priest was saying mass and he yelled, they're burning the Jews, they're burning the Jews. The priest dismissed service so that the parishioners can go and watch the Jews being killed. That's what I thought of some 20 years later when I read the story entitled Troubled Memory. Those people had come see the Freedom Riders get killed. And when we finally got off of that burning bus, all of us was indeed on 
Thank you. 